Good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be with um, part of the Northern Maternity and Midwifery Festival. <clears throat> As I said uh, briefly, I, I did retire um, at the end of 2019, probably a good time, just as we all were going into lockdown soon after that. But I have been very privileged to be able to complete my study. Um, it was completed before I retired, but to complete the, the presentations and the publications. So I'm tying up all the loose ends, which is very nice. Ah. Okay, the title of my talk is Midwifery Led Research into Infant Skin Integrity from Birth to Eight Weeks. Can baby wipe formulation affect the incidence of the nappy rash? Um, the title of the study was Basics, the Baby Skin Integrity Comparison Survey Study. So if you want to look it up, look up Basics. Um, <clears throat> this was a real world research study, by, which is a very important distinction from a clinical trial. A real world research study looks at what happens in a real life situation. So <clears throat> we uh, were looking at three different brands of baby wipe. I'll explain exactly um, what our methods were in a moment, but we didn't, um, we didn't use um, a restricted clinical trial conditions. Mothers actually just cared for their babies the way they would in any case, except they used certain baby wipes and certain nappies. <clears throat> um, I think the important thing is that it was a midwifery led study. Midwives are really a trusted professional group in the UK among women and other health professionals. And I think uh, the fact that the study was midwifery led gave it a lot of credibility with women. We were able to recruit a large number of, of, um, of women very, very quickly and very easily. The, the study was designed and delivered by the University of Salford. And um, we used three recruitment sites. We used antenatal clinics at three NHS trusts across the Greater Manchester area. Now the Greater Manchester area was specifically selected for this research because of the great diversity, ethnic diversity, socioeconomic diversity. We weren't working with a homogeneous group of women. And it was sponsored by the firm Water Wipes. And it was very important to them um, to study their, their product within a, a very, very diverse group of, of mothers and babies. Okay, <clears throat> I didn't do this study all by myself. I had a, a research team and I had a wonderful research team. I think many of you, um, in the greater Manchester area who are watching from, from this area may know some of these people. Um, I was the PI of the research team. Dr. Uh, Jan Lithgow, who's a senior midwifery lecturer at the University of Salford was the co-I. Uh, we had a very good research fellow, a research manager, a professor of public health from Salford who created our statistical tests and then a team of three excellent data collectors, one of whom was an ex-midwife, another was a, a mature psychology student who's now doing a PhD, and <clears throat> um, the other who was a very experienced researcher who has a master's in psychology and does a lot of social um, care research. But I just wanted to say that teamwork is essential. Um, I like this little quote from Andrew Carnegie, but basically, um, I won't read, you can read it to yourself, but basically uh, the last bit says, it is a fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. And I think we all have our own skills and when we put them together in a team, um, things come together in a very good way. Okay, the background to the study. Well, traditionally midwives have always advised water only for cleansing sensitive newborn skin. <clears throat> that was always the advice that in my midwifery career was the advice that was given. But interestingly, this advice um, was part of the NICE guidelines, the National Institute for Clinical Excellence guide guidelines right up until uh, 2020. I say interestingly, because there have been studies right back uh, for the last 20 years that have 
suggested that a baby wipe product is just as effective and also just as safe for newborn babies, starting with Eretz Minital in 2001. Now, the study that will be most familiar to the Manchester crowd is the Lavender et al. study in 2012, which compared the use of water, um, <clears throat> water and cotton wool to one baby wipe product. And that was done at the University of Manchester. And that was also an industry sponsored study. In fact, all of these studies have been sponsored <clears throat> by, um, by um, a, a by one or another um, manufacturers of baby wipes. Um, <clears throat> saying that <clears throat> they could have all done market research, but they chose to use university teams to do their research so that the research would be unbiased and have rigor. Um, so previous studies established the safety and efficacy of baby wipes, which I said, and all studies compared cleansing with water to a single brand. However, our study, the basic study, proposed that the choice of wipe might affect the incidence and severity of IDD or an appy rash, thus the quality of life for the infant and also the parents. No parents like their baby to have a, a nappy rash. Um, <clears throat> I think it came about because um, when water wipes brought out their product, um, they began to get a lot of people coming to them at conferences and saying, oh, this is wonderful. It's so much better than other products I've used. But of course, that's only opinion. It's, it's not scientific. So um, the study really wanted to look at it and it was an unbiased study. So um, that's why it was done. Now our methods were, um, we recruited participants, as I said, at NHS antenatal clinics. Uh, each of my data collectors had a certain NHS trust, so they were able to develop a good relationship with the antenatal clinic staff, and they worked both in the hospital and in the community. <clears throat> However, very soon we began recruiting by word of mouth. Once some women signed up to the study, they told their friends about it, they talked about it in their pregnancy groups or their antenatal classes, and so we had people calling us up and saying, am I eligible for the study? Um, and then through social media, because women talked about it again uh, in pregnancy groups on social media, told their friends about it, and the university also publicized it on the university social media. So we ended up with three different methods of recruitment. <clears throat> Overall, we enrolled 737 women in the study. Now, we tried to over recruit because we were aware that we needed about 150 women in each arm of the study in order to um, get results that would be statistically significant. And we knew that previous studies had had problems both with recruitment and retention of participants. So we over recruited, we recruited 737 women. At the time of the baby's birth, 722 women were still eligible. And that means that the baby was born at term and in good health. Um, overall, 698 women completed the study. So we did have some attrition, but it was a very small amount. <clears throat> we used a, a, a concept of the mother as co-researcher. In other studies, um, the research teams, the, the, the researchers have actually done the, either tests on the baby's skin in some cases or observations on the baby's skin. <clears throat> but we felt the mother knew her baby better than anybody else. Uh, we gave them some, some initial information and um, some pictures from a textbook about skin rashes. And um, we felt that they were the best to observe the baby's skin. So for, t for 55 days, each mother observed her baby's skin at one nappy rash, uh, not nappy rash, nappy change, sorry, per day, and filled in um, a survey on a customized smartphone application the, the, that was developed particularly for this research project. And it was very popular. So there was no paper diary to get lost or get damaged. Um, the mothers reported that the late night feed and nappy change was the most popular time for survey completion, <clears throat> which is why I've got this mother with her smartphone in bed late at night. 
Okay, we used a nappy area skin assessment scale, which went from one, which was no rash, to five, severe rash. And this was adapted from a previously validated tool by um, a neonatal nurse who was part of our advisory board for the research. And the mothers did 55 days of the skin integrity survey, followed by a day 56 survey, which was a product satisfaction survey, but also looked at things like uh, what type of washing powder mothers used, if they used bio or non-bio, um, <clears throat> what sort of bath products they used. So um, that was adapted from one done by Ferber et al. in 2012 as part of the, the Lavender Group. And we did a final qualitative interview phase to explore maternal experience, both of the study and also of caring for their newborn skin. We invited 10% of our participants <clears throat> to um, have interviews with us. These were either in, in person or by phone at uh, the participants. Um, and uh, about half of the women we invited participated. So we had 38 interviews. Um, <clears throat> we used in vivo and also manual template analysis to um, to analyze those, but this, this, this doesn't really talk about, I'm not really talking about the qualitative interviews today. They were very interesting to do. <clears throat> this was a diagram that um, was on the phone app. So it, it's very basic, it's very rough, but it shows one, no rash, two, mild rash, three, moderate, four, severe, and five, extensive. Um, and we were very clear. We said, if your answer to the above is four to five, please contact your GP, midwife, or health visitor for further advice. Although Jan and myself were both midwives, we made it very clear that we weren't providing midwifery advice to the women in the study. We were there to observe and to run the study. <clears throat> and basically, our study had a very simple premise. We were comparing three brands of baby wipes. So all of our participants receive the brand, <clears throat> the same brand of a high quality disposable nappy. Um, this was one that would have been well known to them. Block randomization was used to divide the participants into three groups and each group received a different brand of baby wipe, which was advertised as mild enough for use from birth. We were trying to compare like with like, not um, we were trying to be as, as rigorous as possible and compare our sponsor's product to other products that were similar. And one of the three wipes was the sponsor's product. So the mother is co-researcher model gave the mother full responsibility for observation, assessment, and data collection. And um, email and text reminders were sent to mothers who missed survey days. That was done automatically as part of the uh, smart <clears throat> phone application protocol. Um, and very interestingly, we received, we achieved 100% survey completion compliance from the 698 women who participated and completed the, the, the project. Now we had a very um, complicated algorithm we developed to say how many days we would accept as compliance, full compliance, partial compliance. We didn't need to use that because we had 100% compliance. So we were very, very happy about that. And our findings. <clears throat> Overall rate of um, irritant diaper dermatitis during the first eight weeks of life was 24.6%. And that was similar to other studies. Only 2.4% of babies experienced a rash graded at four to five. So mainly it was a very mild, nappy rash. Um, interestingly, we took demographic, demographic details from women at the start of the study. And um, we did find that things like gender, parity, maternal age, ethnicity, and family income were significant and not always in the way that one might expect or have been found in other studies. Our study wasn't designed to really pick those out, but they're interesting things that could be discussed. Now, midwives will ask why we didn't include feeding method in there. We did ask um, anticipated feeding method uh, when we uh, recruited women, when we signed them up to the study, 
And we did ask in the day 56 what feeding method they had used in the last week. Initially, we had a question in the daily survey about feeding method. But at that time, at the time we were designing the study, there was a lot of controversy about women feeling pressured to breastfeed. And we were concerned that women who chose to formulate feed would not sign up to the study or um, be retained in the study because of the constant question. So we removed it from the protocol. Um, so babies cleansed with brand three, which was water wipes, demonstrated the lowest incidence of IDD at 19% compared with 25% and 30% um, with the other wipes. And this is from Price et al, which was our first uh, publication that we've published on this study. The IDD cleared up more quickly in babies assigned to group three. Uh, a rash lasting one day in the water wipes group lasted approximately 1.5 days in the other groups. Uh, this just shows the, the duration. So with water wipes, it was one day, 1.48 days with leading brand one and 1.69 days in leading brand two. And the incidence, as I said, 19% of the babies in group three uh, had some nappy rash Brand one was 25% and 30% in brand two. Okay, well, where do we go to from here? We have uh, published our first scientific report in pediatrics and neonatology. And that one <clears throat> has a lot about the statistical methods. Um, it's the, the most scientific of the papers. The second paper we published was in the British Journal of Midwifery, and that really was focused on midwives. It was a good overview of the study. And the third and fourth papers, uh, parts one and two, were on the qualitative phase. So all of those are open access. So I do hope that if you're interested in this topic, you'll go and read the papers because obviously there's a limited amount you can say in a short presentation. So where do we go from here? Well, it might be worth doing future research with older babies. The Garcia Bartels study, which I referenced, um, used babies who were nine months old, because babies who are older when they're weaning and they're um, teething, they tend to have higher rates of nappy rash. Uh, we might look at disposable versus reusable nappies. A lot of mothers agreed to use disposable, the disposable nappies as part of the protocol, and they were supplied with all the products but uh, wanted to move on to reusable nappies um, once they'd finished the study. And I was quite happy to hear that. that. Um, different composition of wipes. Um, many firms are now bringing out biodegradable wipes as has water wipes, but those weren't the ones we used in the study. They, they were the original wipes. So just to finish off, I'd like to say the quality of a survey can be judged not only by good design, but also by reporting findings in a way that does more than just reiterate the data. Kelly et al, 2003. And <clears throat> this is the reference list, um, the references I've, I've referred to, the three McVeigh Phipps et al, and the Price et al article with the, the four done by my research group. And um, as I said, open access, so you don't have to subscribe to the journals to read them. So thank you very much, and I'll await any questions, comments, critique, or insights. Thank you. Okay, that's that's great, Fiona. Thank you so much. That's a very, and, and I'm sure it's a bigger project than you 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 presented it in a beautiful way. So it didn't look as huge as it probably was, and as much it was work. A big project, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, and it's great that there's uh, open access articles to be able to got to be got. Yeah. Because I know that's what people like to be able to read the, the actual research to see the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. And I know usually at this point, people are asking about and you 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 alluded to it a little about the kind of issues around um, disposable and reusable and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, did that get, get raised by any of the women? Or any of the, the midwives? There were, women, <clears throat> there were women who said that, oh, I'd really like to use, um, I'd like to use reusable nappies. But for the study protocol, because they're supplied with the disposable, they also said, oh, for the first eight weeks, it's quite nice to have the disposables because 
they're quite difficult. I'm not, you know, I'm not in my routine with my new baby, but once they got into the routine, yes. um, women talked about changing. I'm not all of the 698, but but a number of women did talk about wanting to change to reusable nappies, which is yeah. something that I would like to promote. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just wondering about the actual wipes themselves because they. I know that the uh, water wipes have moved to uh, biodegradable. Now. They're biodegradable. Yeah, the wipes are now biodegradable. Though they're in a, obviously in a plastic dish, aren't they? I mean, that's they are in a plastic. You know, yeah, they're in. I don't know if we get away from plastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think that's that's. I suppose that's usually the sort of questions and and. Um, we have we have a few few questions that are coming through now, yeah. but it's that's often the questions that people are asking because of the whole impact of plastic yeah. and reusable reusable things. I mean, you can cope with certain plastic things because you can use them more than once, I guess. But difficult with the um, wipes bag. That I think yeah. that's the only yeah. issue. I've got a question from Kate. Hi, Kate. And she says, did all three groups use wipes? Was there a group using water or cotton wool for comparison? No, there wasn't because we, <clears throat> we felt that that um, question had been adequately answered by the other studies, um, most, most importantly by the Lavender et al. study. So we felt that um, we didn't need to have that comparison group. What we were doing was comparing different brands of wipe. Okay, so Kate, have a look at the Lavender et al reference because that will i think that was uh water and cotton wool uh, um water wipes and no it wasn't was it wipes. just two was it just it was johnson and johnson uh the wipe that they all oh, right okay okay they, they yes i remember now johnson and johnson yeah, yeah so yeah because it's, it's interesting that it, the well it's good i mean it's good in a way isn't it that these uh, manufacturers are going to research to get information this, this is the properly first rigorous yeah, okay. this was the first study um, uh, sponsored by Water Wipes. But interestingly, there was a group of neonatal nurses in Utah who did a study with no sponsorship, but they wanted to develop a new protocol because they had a big problem with nappy rash in right, their okay. neonatal unit. And as part of their protocol, they moved to water wipes because they were the, oh, the, right. the wipe that had the least ingredients, just water and a bit of oh. fruit extract. And... Um, they had very good results as well. But of course, it wasn't just the water wipes. It was a whole protocol. So right. you have to tease okay. out which, which <laughs> were important. But that, that, that yeah. also is an interesting study and probably can be found on the water wipes, um, probably their website. Can that yeah, be actually, because, uh, and we should say the water wipes website is a very good resource. There's plenty of professional resources yeah. there yeah. with lots of different references. So if you're interested in this area or... You might be thinking about research yourself, and it's always nice that on these days where we come across people who are interested and have a question that's kind of stimulated by one of our wonderful speakers to go off and do some research. Fantastic. Thank you. Ruth Clark says, excellent presentation. Oh, thank you. Raising some interesting points for further discussion. But I expected no less from you, Fiona. She obviously knows you. Does, Ruth yeah. Clark. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, was it was there any? I mean, you've you finished that research now, and I know from your CV that you've got interesting work ahead. I have to. I didn't include this. I've just I've, a season, a season at the Weaver's Table. So I know that Fiona is going to go into novel writing. But if you weren't doing that. What sort of research would you be moving into from this that you've just done, do you think? That's a very interesting question. Um, I, I don't know if, if it would be extending in this area. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, it was really serendipity. It was, we were, we were asked if we would talk to the Water Wipes group. They were talking to different university research groups and we were one of the groups that they spoke to and we put together a proposal and they liked our proposal over other proposals. So um, therefore we were awarded the research contract, but I, there are so many things. Um, I really like maternal baby attachment areas like that, I think are, are probably my main interest in um, 
women's choices in labor, I think is another big interest. But as I said, I am retired now. I won't be doing more <laughs> midwifery research. I'm not sure that that will happen. I know because somebody who's retiring and is setting out a, a series of books of novels now, I don't think it's properly retiring. Well, and in... <laughs> that's just fun. I've, I've done the first one. It's available on Kobo, a season at the Oh, wow. Table. And uh, there will be two more in the trilogy. So. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. Well, well done. And thank you so much for sharing your research with us. Audience, you need to get out and have a look at those references and take on board some of the findings and think about what it means for, for your practice. That's fantastic. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Sue. Okay, we're going to move on. Sk skippity skip to the next session. <laughs>